like 5000 likes to this video, we will implode more patriotic news. Thank you. 261 sanctuary cities about to riot after what Trump just took from all of them who didn't listen. Liberals can insist that President Donald Trump is not their president all they want, but it's not going to change the fact that he actually is. This defiant mantra doesn't take the power from him as he just proved after 261 so-called sanctuary cities refused his orders and learn what happens when you don't comply with the nation's laws. Every policy that President Trump tries to implement for Americans' safety, is not only met with a great deal of resistance from the left but also from defiant judges who block his progress. We saw this several times with Trump's travel ban from terrorist-hide countries and now we're seeing it with regards to so-called sanctuary cities. Judges, mayors, and governors are disguising their clear liberal bias as judicial rulings and now tensions over this illegal immigrant issue have put America at the breaking point, edging on a civil war. Trump isn't letting off illegal immigration anytime soon and because of that. He's applying extra pressure on lawless states who continue to allow it. Since these state governments don't mind using other people's money to pay for these people to be here and keep coming, Trump plans to cut the problem off where it starts. It's clear Trump has had enough of this game and isn't tiptoeing around ways to fix it anymore. Sanctuary cities continue to go against the president, won't cooperate with local police, refuse to turn immigrants in, and worst of all, actually punish citizens who offer construction bids for the border wall. While it was previously proposed to find states who refused to comply with his orders, Trump just came up with a better plan. It takes a lot of cash to support illegal immigrants who don't ever pay it back into the system. This money comes in large part from the Burn Justice Assistance Grants. The Federalist Papers reports that the Justice Department plans to block these grants from criminal justice, from sanctuary cities specifically jurisdictions that keep immigration and customs enforcement from talking to local officials and interviewing inmates, or not notifying ICE when they release aliens ICE wants to deport. As easy as it came, it's about to go away, since these cities disrespect law enforcement as much as they do the president by trying to stop them from enforcing the immigration rules. The Daily Signal explains. It is significant because a large share of the funds awarded in this program go to sanctuary jurisdictions. For example, according to Justice Department records, the four largest grants, and seven out of the top ten recipients of the Burn, JAG grants are sanctuaries. Under the new rules announced by Attorney General Jeff Sessions, these four top grant getters, New York City, Cook County, Illinois, Los Angeles, and Philadelphia are likely to be disqualified from these grants in the future if they maintain their current policies toward ICE. These cities received more than $10 million in grants in 2016. It makes perfect sense to not reward bad behavior with cash that could be used to ensure the rule of law which our nation is built on. Sanctuary cities don't make their own rules and can't expect other people to pay for it when it goes against what the president has already set. San Francisco and cities like it, are putting the well-being of criminal aliens before the safety of our citizens, and those city officials who authorize these policies have the blood of dead Americans on their hands, former White House Press Secretary Sean Spicer has previously said. However, defiant governors and judges who go against our president at every move in favor of illegals is far worse than just usurping our president's decisions and appeasing their political parties. Fox News Perfectly Blunt show host, Tucker Carlson, pointed this out along with making the declaration with specific regard to the practice of liberals getting lone district court judges to reverse Trump's every order. This sets a terrifying new standard. The least accountable branch of our government becomes the most powerful, the judicial branch, and various cities and states can nullify virtually any federal law they don't like, effectively becoming their own countries. Tucker explained before issuing a warning of what will come from this increasingly popular practice. There's a word for that, it's called civil war. Tucker laid it out perfectly. Liberals don't respect the system, checks and balances that our forefathers set up on purpose, which was to create a government accountable to the people. They have found and exploited all the loopholes they could, but can't outsmart or outpower the president.
Trump cabinet's secret weekly meeting just got out, deems horrified when they find out what it's for. Many people believe that the United States has strayed way too far from the principles that we were founded on, and the president and his second-in-command are two of those people. America was built, not out of a desire to just expand someone's territory, but out of a necessity to have a place governed by the people who had God at their center. Of course a government by the people and for the people would be guided by whatever the people want, and lately, the people seem to be wanting to steal from one another with bloated social programs, sit around and not produce and point fingers at anyone who tries to keep the peace. This is so incredibly sad, and it stems from a world where Christ isn't a factor in so many people's lives. Thankfully, America woke up, and whether, for the sake of religion or economy, we managed to get someone in office who is concerned with doing the right thing. This has caused a huge shift in the way the White House is being run. Including one major change that has liberals infuriated and conservatives crying tears of joy. Many of the upper level cabinet members, as well as staffers, have begun having a regular Bible study, and reports say that it's as wonderful as you hope it would be. Via the Hill, many of President Trump's cabinet members gather at a weekly session to study the Bible, the Christian Broadcasting Network. CBN, reported Monday. Ralph Drolinger, the founder of Capital Ministries, says he leads a weekly Bible study with cabinet members such as Education Secretary Betsy DeVoe, Energy Secretary Rick Perry, Health and Human Services Secretary Tom Price and CIA Director Mike Pompeo. It's the best Bible study that I've ever taught in my life. They are so teachable. They're so noble. They're so learned, Drolinger told CBN. Vice President Pence, who is a sponsor of the Faith Sessions, reportedly joins the group when his schedule allows. Mike Pence has uncompromising biblical tenacity and he has a loving tone about him that's not just a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal, Drollinger said in part. And then fourthly, he brings real value to the head of the nation. Drollinger praised Attorney General Jeff Sessions, who he said also attends the gathering for quickly turning around and using the lessons of the weekly session. He'll go out the same day I teach him something and I'll see him do it on camera and I just think, wow, these guys are faithful, available and teachable and they're at Bible study every week they're in town, Drollinger told CBN, referring to sessions. Drollinger, a former NBA player, founded his organization with the intent of spreading the Christian faith to lawmakers across the U.S. He has started similar Bible groups in dozens of state capitals as well as weekly studies in both chambers of Congress. A weekly Bible study group with cabinet members, Drollinger said, is likely the first of its kind in almost 100 years. Trump, who is invited to attend, receives a copy of the scripture teaching each week, according to CBN which has interviewed the president. News like this is such a huge encouragement to evangelicals, who have felt like our country was wandering in the desert for the past eight years. Our nation was essentially thumbing its nose at anything even remotely biblical while our former president was in the Oval Office, and the nation suffered because of it. Liberals and the media beat Americans over the head with the separation of church and state to the point that we were scared to have anything religious even on public property which is a gross misinterpretation of the doctrine being cited. The concept of separating church and state was one taken from a quote that Thomas Jefferson wrote in a letter to the Danbury Baptist Association in 1802. He was attempting to assure them that they would never have to deal with the government meddling in what they could teach in their places of worship. That has been twisted beyond recognition to basically mean that Christians aren't allowed to act out their Christianity on government property. However, President Trump and those he's chosen to surround himself with see the difference and are working to change that. They've invited those who have strong religious beliefs to foster those while at work, in the White House. Perhaps Americans have realized that those in office will be more unselfish and moral if they feel beholding to a higher power, or maybe they really want this country to turn back to God, but either way, this change is a huge relief to those who've been praying for a spiritual awakening in Washington. Source the Hill, share if you're happy to see the Bible welcome in the White House.
Obama just revealed he's grooming America's worst nightmare for president in 2020, here's why. It was revealed today that since the Democrat Party knows they can never beat the Republicans in the arena of ideas they once again are planning to win by using the race card. Former President Barack Hussein Obama and some of his trusted advisors, two of whom are David Axelrod and Valerie Jarrett, who helped him turn the U.S. into a petter dish of social justice experiments have been pushing former Massachusetts Governor Deval Patrick to challenge President Donald Trump in 2020. And it seems like the campaign has already started. A few days ago Deval Patrick gave his thoughts on what he claims is President Donald Trump's style of governing. He accused President Trump of governing by fear and promoting a dishonest pitch for economic nostalgia while at the same time encouraging a rise in casual racism and ditching any real commitment to civil rights. What? Now let's look at the ignorant comments spewed by Governor Patrick. This charlatan from Massachusetts claims Trump governs from fear, yes, most of us are fearful of what taking in unknown refugees of fighting age will mean for our nation, look at Europe. Next, he says Trump promotes a dishonest economic pitch, so my guess is Patrick is trying to say the middle class needs to result to food stamps and welfare, not jobs. And no Duvall, Trump does not promote the rise of racism, but your buddy Obama sure did. Lastly, you speak of civil rights? Like the civil rights of conservatives and Tea Party members to not be hunted down by the IRS because they opposed Obama? Governing reports how Massachusetts former governor hid millions in public funding, former governor Deval Patrick's administration secretly diverted nearly $27 million in public money to off-budget accounts that paid for a $1.35 million trade junket tab, bloated advertising contracts, and a deal with a federally subsidized tourism venture backed by U.S. Senator Harry Reid, a Herald investigation has found. When does politicians' unethical behavior become a crime? Boston 2024 Olympics group hires former Governor Patrick the three flavors of corruption the maneuver to fatten the hidden trust accounts with millions from state quasi-public agencies allowed Patrick to skirt the state legislature and evade state budget cutbacks during the recession, the Herald found. State lawmakers never approved the funding plan, and it's not clear who even knew about it but it is clear who orchestrated the end around the budget and got state agencies to contribute. The, Patrick, administration asked us to, said Katie Hauser, spokeswoman for the Massachusetts Convention Center Authority, which kicked in the largest amount to the trusts, $23.5 million. One of the trusts was run by a close Patrick loyalist, Betsy Wall, a former top campaign aide later appointed as the $134,000 head of travel and tourism. The trust dinging taxpayers for Patrick's Around the World Travel was funded by Massport and the Mass Tech Collaborative, an obscure agency that gets state and federal dollars, including an injection of Obama stimulus money. Those two agencies, along with the MCCA, funneled nearly $27 million to the trust plan. Records show that from 2011 to 2014, Patrick and his traveling entourage rang up a $535,558 hotel tab, $332,193 in airfare, $305,976 for limos and transportation and $175,000 in other costs. All told, it came to $1.35 million. The total cost of Patrick's overseas trips, including a $225,000 visit to China in 2007, before the trust accounts were created, cost $1,573,949, according to records from the state's Housing and Economic Development Office, which oversaw the accounts. The 10 overseas junkets, including a $364,000 trip to South America, cost far more than the Patrick administration previously disclosed. Patrick started a non-profit design to pay for the trade missions in 2010, but after spending only $130,000 in private donations, the effort apparently was scuttled. Records at the Attorney General's office show no spending or donations to the non-profit after 2011. In an email response, Wall said she had no conversations with Patrick on using the trusts to fund trade missions. 
the donations from the Convention Center Authority under its then-executive director James E. Rooney could raise eyebrows. Patrick approved the MCCEA's expansion plans in 2014 after the authority had given the $23.5 million to the Tourism Trust. Governor Charlie Baker has since halted the expansion. That trust run by Wall funneled more than $17 million to the state tourism office's advertising firm, Connolly Partners, in addition to the millions Connolly got through budget appropriations, records show. Wall's trust also provided $223,000 in extra funding to the Boston Symphony Orchestra and $500,000 to Brand USA, a Washington-based public-private partnership launched by Congress and strongly backed by Reed. Records show. Brand USA has been criticized for being a haven for Democratic cronies and a benefit for Las Vegas casinos in Reed's home state. In an email response, Wall said the Tourism Trust was designed to ease the pressure on the state budget but declined to say whether legislative leaders were aware of the spending. Other trusts, funded mostly by the quasi-public agency Mass Development, got more than $10 million to help fund operations and other ventures for the Housing and Economic Development and Business Development offices. All told, contributions from the quasi-public agencies to the trusts totaled $37.35 million. Great, just what this nation needs. Another crook. After electing Barry twice I very much doubt this nation will ever elect a black president again, not because of color, but because people will remember the social mess he left behind. But if you do decide to run, Governor Patrick, run under what you and your party offer this nation, not on lies against President Trump. That didn't work in 2016, and it won't work in 2020. Please share if you will support President Trump in 2020.